Well, that's just a short video on what can happen if you have an intermittent break in the blue wire from your Pinda probe. Obviously, I didn't know what the, what was going on. So, here's how the story unfolded. I had finished printing, this is two nights ago. Everything was fine, shut the machine down. And came in the next morning to resume what I was working on. And as soon as you would select it, everything would heat up. And the moment that you would normally go into, um, well, your next mode, which would be your probing mode, it would just stop, didn't do anything. And the screen would say, um, I can't remember exactly, but something about uh, Z calibration error. And I fooled around with it, and I, I found that the Z motors worked. They would move up. In fact, you, you could move them all the way up and they would click at the top and I think finally out of desperation I decided I'd just do a, a complete uh, recalibration. So I went into and, and said, yeah, let's calibrate and do that whole thing. And the odd thing about when the blue wire is broken in the wire loom from bending is it doesn't come up and tell you there's a Pinda probe problem. It's just that in that state, that's the same as the Pinda probe sending it, you know, either a positive or a negative signal. I don't know which. I didn't throw the voltmeter on it to find out. But when you go through the calibration, it actually will say Z, OK. So X, Y, and Z all passed. It would do the heat up bed, that's good. It would do the nozzle check, that's good. Heat you don't know, heat up. And then it would get to the point where it tells you, you know, to put the metal bed on. It's going to actually try to lay a line. And when it gets right to that point where it's going to do that, it would fail. It would say Z calibration out. Because it would never run the Z motors down. It would always run them up due to the information that it was getting from the Pinda probe. I guess the Pinda probe thought it was already all the way down on the bed with that blue wire broken which means the the light is out on the Pinda probe and I couldn't figure out what was going on and because it's an intermittent problem a, a broken wire is not always broken as you know uh, you could look at the Pinda probe and you could from time to time like if it was up in the air or something and you, you'd well the lights on so it it must be working and so I ended up doing chat with uh, Carissa and found out, you know, that wasn't going anywhere. They had me do all the things that I'd already done. They had me hit the reset button on the board and do the reset, the total machine factory reset, which if you've never done, which basically means you tap the lower button and sort of as the word Persa Research here comes up, you hold and push the control button in until you hear a beep and you release, then you get some choices. And I did the total factory reset and then uh, went through the calibration because that's what the machine keeps prompting for and of course had exactly the same problem where it would go through and say Z OK, Y OK, X OK and, but then fail. So what more? There was more to the story. Well, in the, in, in the end, let's say through all that fooling around and everything, what I found was that you know, moving the wire cable coming out of the hot end assembly back that the Pinda probe light would, would turn off and on. I went, okay, now we know. It's, it's not a control board failure of any sort or a software problem. It's a broken wire. And so it, that came down to, you know, undoing the loom, back pulling the wire, trying to hold both ends steady and, and wiggling parts to find out whether the brake was up there or up here or here or, or where the brake might be and finally isolate it down to an area about that big and cut all the uh, hose that covers the four wires from the pin to probe off so then I could get down to each one of the four individual wires and found that it was the blue one that was intermittent so I made a cut there and soldered a a new little length of wire in and taped it all up, put, put it all back together, and that was good to go. So I just thought that was um, interesting. If it seems to me, if I had been talking to a, an actual tech at Prosa, 
instead of you know someone that's trained to answer normal general questions that someone who just bought a machine might have they would have realized as soon as I told them well the Z only moves up it never moves down they would have went oh well there's something wrong with the Pinda probe it thinks it's always on the bed so the Z can only move up it can't move down and and they would have taken me down a different path which might have led to the solution quicker but uh, I just thought I would share that one with you because it's, it's a strange one. So if something like that ever happens, you'll know what to do. The only other really bizarre thing that I've had happen on an earlier uh, machine, way back when the MK2 first came out, I was one of the first ones to order on those, so I had a very early MK2. And I had a, a very strange thing pop up where every now and then I would get uh, basically the heat temperature error, the thermal protection come up and but everything would heat up and everything would look good it would it could happen one minute into a print or it might happen three hours into a print it was just it was just totally bizarre and again tech help didn't help and in fact I was on with them to, with an actual technician for over three days doing all kinds of tests for the guy but that's not his shortcoming the thing is it was just that bizarre of an intermittent problem it wasn't a broken wire anywhere in the loom or on the machine and of course the heat cartridge wasn't burned out because it would heat up and melt plastic and maybe print for an hour or a minute you just never knew but in the end what it actually ended up being because the problem got bad enough that I could find it is the heat cartridge itself was intermittent inside the heat cartridge, the Constantine wire that's used, would, when it was cool or at certain temperatures, would, would make a connection and the heat cartridge would work. And then other times when it gets really hot and things expand and contract inside that cartridge, it would break and lose connection. So it had to get bad enough that I could actually find where the intermittent problem was and replace the heat cartridge. That was just another one of those totally bizarre intermittent type things that, I, that can happen. So. Just letting you know, heads up on those kind of things that happen. In case they ever happen to you, you'll have a, an idea of what to do.